Today we're talking about vinyl record storybooks. Hey friends, welcome back. So a while ago, a friend of mine who collects records gave me these as a gift. So these are four different vinyl record storybooks and each one comes with a seven inch record. Basically the way these work is that you play the record first and then you follow along with the story in the book. So I thought these things were really interesting and I figured we'd talk about them in today's video. But real quick, today's song of the day is Don't Stand So Close To Me by The Police. Good song and also good advice. So if you have a suggestion for a song of the day as well, post it in the comments down below and you might see it in a future video. All right, so getting back to these storybooks, they were also known as record readers and were pressed from about the 1940s to the late 1970s. And the main companies that pressed them were Capitol Records, Disneyland Records, Peter Pan Records, and Power Records, which was an offshoot of Peter Pan that focused primarily on comic book style record readers. Now, overall, these storybooks were mostly geared toward a younger audience and were basically designed to keep the little ones entertained, but also to help them improve their reading skills. And because of that fact, it was very common for parents to give these vinyl record storybooks as a gift to their offspring. So essentially the parents could drop the needle on the record and little Junior could follow along in the book. Or if he was old enough, he could play the record himself on his own portable record player as we see in this illustration. And to make things even easier for him, there would also be a musical chime or other sound effect that would let Junior know when it was time to turn the page. So basically, both the record and the book would sort of complement each other, and they would also teach the younger generation how to read. And as I said, this was a form of entertainment long before Disney Plus. In a way, it was a much simpler time. Now, speaking of Disney, a lot of their storybooks from their Disneyland record label involved popular Disney characters or were based in some way on Disney movies. Here's a few titles that they released over the years. Bambi, Dumbo, Frosty the Snowman, It's a Small World, Little Red Riding Hood, Mary Poppins, Pecos Bill, Peter Pan, Robin Hood, Sleeping Beauty, Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs, The Fox and the Hound, The Pokey Little Puppy, The Story of Heidi, not sure who she is, but apparently this is her story, Thumbelina, Winnie the Pooh, and even The Hobbit. So as you can see, when it came to storybook vinyl, Disney pretty much dominated the market. But Peter Pan Records also had a few titles of their own, such as Cinderella, Mother Goose Nursery Rhymes, Peter Rabbit, Pinocchio, and The Three Little Pigs. So basically, Peter Pan's storybooks were about second most popular after Disney. Now, speaking of the records themselves, the earliest versions were on 10-inch shellac records and would spin at 78 RPM, like this Bugs Bunny book from Capitol Records from 1947, or these three other titles from 1949 from the same label. We got Woody Woodpecker, Bozo the Clown Has a Party, and Bozo the Clown and His Rocket Ship. So apparently this Bozo character was pretty popular back in the day. Now, the following year, in 1950, Peter Pan Records released this one, The Three Little Pigs, on a 10-inch plastic vinyl record. So this was about the time that vinyl records were starting to replace the older shellac records. And I think it's kind of funny how at the time they advertised these newer records as non-breakable under normal conditions. Because as we all know, even though vinyl is more durable, if you bend it in half, it's still gonna break. Now, after these storybooks made the transition to vinyl, they pretty much got rid of the 10 inch records altogether and basically just started pressing seven inch records. And these smaller records would spin at either the standard 45 RPM or 33 and one third RPM so they could basically squeeze more audio onto a single disc and therefore increase the overall runtime. So even though a large portion of the storybooks were on these seven inch records 
A handful of them were expanded to fill an entire 12 inch record. And if that record was spinning at 33 RPM, that would give us over 40 minutes of total runtime. So with those types of records, you could add more music, more dialogue, more animations, and basically get to tell a much larger story. Like in the Spider-Man record comic book from 1977. This one's really cool. I wish they'd do more stuff like this today. Now looking at the four record readers that I currently own, first off we've got Bozo the Clown at the Dog Show, which features a lot of nice artwork of the different dog breeds, like this boxer, get it? Or this English bulldog right here, or even this Scottish terrier playing some bagpipes. Because I mean, what's more Scottish than that, really? And we get my personal favorite, this really happy dog. Just look at that smile. Next up, we got Hopalong Cassidy and the Square Dance Holdup, which is kind of like an old Western style book that features 34 pages of text and black and white photographs. Next up, we've got Seven Little Postmen from Disneyland Records, which tells the story of little Tommy trying to get a letter to his grandma and how there were seven postmen along the way that helped him deliver that letter. So it's a nice little story that rhymes and features 24 pages of colorful artwork. And as a side note, this particular copy belonged to Robert Edward Caro because someone wrote his name up here at the top. So Robert, if you're watching, I have your book. And finally, last of all, we've got Disney's Lady and the Tramp, which features 19 pages of colorful artwork and even has members of the original cast doing the voiceovers. So that's pretty cool. Now I'd love to play you guys a sample of one of these records, but unfortunately due to YouTube's dumb copyright policies, I'm not gonna be able to do that. Also, I wouldn't wanna upset the Disney overlords. So here's what I will do. The next time I do an Instagram live stream, I'll play these record readers so that you guys can hear them for yourself. So if you're not following me on Instagram yet, go ahead and click the link in the video description down below so you won't miss out on that live stream. I'm starting to like Instagram more because their copyright policies aren't as strict as YouTube's and that's really nice. Now, last of all, Storybook Vinyl was eventually replaced by cassette storybooks in the early 1980s as that format was becoming more popular. So will that really be the final chapter of Storybook Vinyl or could this format make a comeback in the near future? Only time will tell. Now, what are your thoughts on record readers? Did you ever get one of these when you were younger? Let me know down in the comments below. And if you love all things vinyl record related, be sure to hit the subscribe button and the bell notifications so you won't miss out on the new videos. And most importantly of all friends, have a great day, stay safe out there, and keep spinning that vinyl. Look at how happy that dog is.